it's just going to be a quick video about what I've been up to the last three weeks. I've been quite busy. Um, I haven't got any news about the mixing hot end in this video, but I should have some uh, news fairly soon. Some exciting news as well, which will be good. Um, but in the meantime, I've been doing lots of other bits and bobs. So what I'll do is I'll segment this video uh, into different timestamps. So you'll be able to um, go down the bottom and look at any bits that might interest you and just skip over anything that doesn't interest you. So firstly, I sorted out the uh, failed extruder motors. Last time I tried the six input hot end, I had two motor failures, one of which was just a connector on the, on the stepper come loose. And the other was a failed motor. Um, that's now three motors I've had fail out of the original batch of six that I bought for the extruders. Um, none of the other motors, the XYZ and UV, AB, they've all been fine. Just those ones. So on the basis that um, maybe they were a bad batch or something, um, I changed all six anyway. Um, the original ones I bought were not pancake ones as such. Um, they were 25mm long. The 20mm pancake ones that were available at the time didn't have all that much torque. Um, probably enough, but for an extra 5mm of length I could get 30% more torque. That's why I went for those ones. But I found some 20mm long ones with as much if not more torque as my 25mm ones. So uh, I changed all six anyway. Um, not an easy thing to do on my machine because the screws go in through the extruder into the motor. Um, so I have to kind of disassemble the gantry plate completely in order to change the steppers. But anyway, got that done. So the other thing I've done is uh, I've made quite a few extensive changes to the uh, liquid cooling system. Um, I bought and fitted and modified um, a single input liquid cooled hot end just so that I've got something to print with. And I may start on a, on a third hot end, which is, uh, the plan is it's going to be for um, exotic filaments and or for high speed printing. So with the cooling system, um, the pump failed as well as some other things I wanted to change. Um, it was only a cheap one, so I bought this one, which is still cheap, but not as cheap as the really cheap one. It looks, it, it seems to be a lot more robust and uh, the reason I chose it mostly was because the um, the pump is external so it looks like I'd be able to change the motor and all the pump and leave the rest of it intact if it should fail again. But it's, um, it's very quiet and because uh, it has quite a big volume of liquid in it, in the tank, um, it's difficult to see or hear when it's actually working. So um, I bought this cheap kind of flow meter thingy, uh, just got an impeller inside. But at least that gives me a, a visual indication uh, that it's working. It happens to come with a temperature sensor as well embedded in it in this little display. I had intended to um, put a thermistor in the circuit somewhere and uh, have that monitored by the duet. Um, I'll probably still do that because uh, in the event of a something going wrong, the temperature getting too high or not changing or something or other, I can use a macro to um, take some action if I monitor it through the duet. So I'll probably do that at some point in the future. So I'm now in a situation where basically I've got kind of three hot ends on the go. I've got the, the six input mixing one and then I've got, the, uh, got a single input one which I'll talk about in a little bit and a, a dual input one which I'll also talk about. Um, but they're all going to be liquid cooled. So on the basis that I'll be changing between them periodically, I wanted to be able to uh, quickly disconnect the cooling system without losing too much or losing or spilling too much fluid. Um, so I found these taps which I've fitted, um, which have got push fit connectors. And so then I also made uh, a bunch of um, adapters out of aluminium, which have got a um, a straight section that will go into the push fit connector and a barb section that I can then connect flexible tubing to, sort of silicon tubing. The plan is when um, switching hot ends I can just turn those taps off and then pull out the push fit connectors and I won't spill or lose too much fluid. So on a hot end I just wanted something that I could print with. Um, the, the, the Core XY UVAB thing I've got is the only machine I've got. So, uh, because I've been messing around trying to get a six input mixing hot end working for quite some time, 
Um, I haven't been able to print anything at all. And because I've now got liquid cooling set up anyway, I thought about making um, just a single input liquid cooled hot end, but then I saw this on Amazon, um, which was cheap. It was probably cheaper than the materials would have cost me if I wanted to make something myself. So I thought, well, that would have... Some of the reviews said that the, uh, the, the, the coolant in and out connectors are the same size as Bowden tube, 4 mil OD. So, so it's designed primarily to use Bowden tubing for the liquid cooling. Um, some people had said that the 2 mil ID of the, of the PTFE tube was um, too small to get enough flow through it. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, but the adapters I've made have got a 3 mil diameter hole in them. So they're four mil OD, three mil ID, and a three mil diameter hole is two and a quarter times bigger cross-sectional area than a two mil. Anyway, it seems to work. I've printed a few things with it. It is what it is. Personally, I hate clamping heater cartridges in that way, and I hate even more holding thermistor cartridges in with a grub screw in the side. Obviously, I had to make a kinetic mount on my hot ends. I use the nozzle as a Z-Probe, so I've got a kinematic mount. Um, basically one side is a hinge, which is that brass part. On the carriage itself there are two spring-loaded um, screw thingies with, with sprung-loaded ball ends that, that fit in the end of that brass part and, and form a hinge. And then on the other side is just the brass bolt, which is one half of the switch, and it sits it's the, it's the mechanical stop for the hot end, but it's also an electrical switch. It sits against a brass plate. So as the, uh, as the bed comes up, well, as soon as it touches the nozzle, it lifts the, uh, the bolt off of the plate and it breaks the switch. And, and that's my Z-Probe. It's, um, it's extremely accurate, very precise, very repeatable, and um, doesn't need any conditioning board or anything like that with it. Uh, but I, it does mean I have to make this kind of mounting arrangement for every hot end that I'm going to fit. Anyway, it, it prints well enough. So this is one thing I, w I wanted to do. I printed this part, which is, um, it's an adapter plate that goes um, underneath the, the hot end carriage. 
So I've got two 30mm fans, two 30mm blower fans that I fit either side and they blow air down through the ducts um, which directs it down and towards the nozzle. The original part cooling fan solution I had was okay but I couldn't, there's nowhere for me to fit a, a light and I quite miss having that, um, that light around the hot end. I like those these round cob light things that shine down, they're really bright. So that's just held on with cable ties. And in the plate I can adjust the height of it because all the hot ends are slightly different length. Uh, I'll try and make them as close as possible but there's going to be some variation. So I'll need to be able to move the whole thing up and down so that I can get the right position relative to whatever nozzle happens to be on whatever hot end that I've fitted. So uh, finally this is the other hot end that I'm working on which I'm actually quite excited about. It's uh, it's all metal, it's actually five metals. Um, <laughs> so the, uh, the nozzle is um, a slice engineering hardened steel nozzle. The heater block is brass. The heat brakes are modified mosquito heat brakes, which are copper and stainless steel. And the liquid coolant block or tank or whatever you want to call it is uh, made from aluminium. So it has two inputs, but it's not a mixing hot end in that sense. Something I've, I've learned from using mixing hot ends over the years is that they're actually also very good for high melt rate, high volume, flow rate, high speed printing. Because you've got multiple melt chambers. Uh, but not only does that give you a bigger surface area, when you're feeding multiple input, multiple filaments in, then each filament moves at a slower speed to make up the whole. So for example, this one, I've, I've designed it to use, have two inputs. And the intention is that it, I will load the same filament into each input and set the mixing ratio to 50-50. So it means that each filament will travel at half the speed that it normally would if you had one great big long melt chamber. So the block is about 20, 25 mil, something like that. So I've got two melt chambers that are that length, giving me a total melt chamber length, if you like, of about 50 mil. But as I say, the filament will move through each chamber at half the speed that it would through if it was one long melt chamber. So it should give a really high melt rate. So this is the hot block, I made it kind of similar to my six input hot end in that it's actually three parts. Um, the, the top part is just the plate that the heat brakes will screw into. And then the big chunk in the middle is the heater block. So it's got two holes um, drilled at an angle which converge at a central point. And then I've used a separate block for the nozzle and, and most of the reason for that is um, the way that I've installed the heater and thermistor. So basically the heater and thermistor cartridges go into vertical holes in the, in the big hot block. And then the nozzle block has, a, has slots to take the wires so they come out the side. So there are no clamps or screws or anything that hold those cartridges in. Uh, to change it I just undo the four bolts, drop the nozzle block off the bottom and slide them out. I assembled them all with um, some boron nitride paste that um, I've still got left over that Slice Engineering kindly sent me. Uh, it's good stuff to use on heaters and, and thermistors because it's, um, because it's a very good thermal conductor but a very poor electrical conductor. So these are the heat brakes that I uh, that I'm using, and what I've uh, what's inspired me to make this. Um, basically, I've got a bunch of slice engineering mosquito heat brakes from an earlier attempt to at making the mixing hot end, which don't work in that uh, usage case because with mixing hot ends, some filaments are static as the print progresses, and I found that you get heat heat creep through the filament itself which can swell and cause a blockage effectively. It doesn't matter how effective or how efficient the heat break is if the heat conducts up through the filament. So it's a problem if you've got static filament, which is what happens with a mixing hot and not all the inputs are moving forward. 
But with this art end, the intention is that all the filaments will move all the time, albeit at half speed. So in that case, in my opinion, these are the best heat breaks that money can buy. Now the bimetallic design, the walls of the heat break tubes are really, really thin, so very little heat finds its way past the heat break. But because um, I've already got liquid cooling uh, system on the printer, I didn't see much point in fitting fans and having air cooling and and so what I've done is basically I've turned off the fins of the copper heat brake that's normally on a on a mosquito heat brake and Dan and Chris if you're watching this um, I'm really sorry for butchering two of your wonderful heat brakes um, but anyway um, it was not an easy thing to do they're quite fragile because of the thin wall of the tube and I suspect, I don't know for sure, but I suspect the um, the copper heat sink is probably just a press fit on the tube, or it might be glued, I'm not sure. But anyway, I had to, I put a 2mm drill in a tailstock to support the tube, and then took tiny, tiny cuts, and eventually turned, turned all the fins off of the copper brake to make a smooth copper tube, about 3.2mm diameter. Moving on, this is the cooling block that I made. Um, it's a much simpler design, I mean various people have pointed out to me that it doesn't need to be like the water jacket of an internal combustion engine which is um, where I was coming from my first kind of design so it's just two vertical holes joined together with a, what, a single cross drilled hole so water flows in through one hole down across and up out of the other hole. I tap the end of those holes 6mm um, to take an M6 push fit connector for the water pipe and then the cross drill hold I just tap the end of that and, and screw the bung in it and then there are two holes that will uh, for the um, heat brakes to go through so the heat brakes are about 3.2 mil diameter so I made those holes about 3.3 and then I put some um, heat sink compound on them to take up any air gaps um, so they're pretty good fit so the brass parts in the top are um, press fit adapters for Bowden clips. So when it goes together, the, um, the top of the Mosquito heat brake tube sticks up through the middle of those, um, those fittings. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll open up the end of my Bowden tube with a sort of 2.2 mil drill bit and then the, the Bowden tube will slide over that stainless steel tube and then it'll be held in with the clip. So I've still got to make the mount for that um, to put it on my machine and then um, that will be another hot end that I can play with. So hopefully, as I say, the intention is this one, I'll be able to use it with exotic filaments that may be abrasive uh, and or um, stick large nozzles in, sort of one mil size, that kind of thing, and or do some high speed printing. So that about wraps it up for now. Um, I said at the beginning of the video, I should shortly have some more news about the uh, six input hot end so i'll be doing another video on that fairly shortly i hope um, that's all for now thanks for watching